Let's rise up as we pray. I want you to talk to the Lord and tell him what to expect him to do for you and to do in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege we have tonight to look into the pages of Scripture so that we can know how Christ works and moves today. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you will move through every life in Jesus' name. You have put us in places of responsibility. And there is a lot we need to do to honor you and to glorify you, to edify the church, and to bring lost sinners into the kingdom of God. There are times we will be called upon to minister to their physical needs. And many times, if we're not able to do it, they run to the wrong places. Many times in search for healing, many people lose their lives. They sell their souls into the hands of the devil. Yet if the church were to arise today to manifest your power, to go in the authority of the name of Christ, and to manifest the same anointing that we experienced in the early church. Many more people will come into the kingdom. Therefore, Lord, we pray that in the short time we have tonight, you'll speak to our hearts. You'll touch the court of every heart. Until every heart will vibrate and have the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. If there is any confusion in any mind, I pray, O oh Lord, that you take all the confusion away. So that we'll be able to stand in your power and in your strength. Send us out, Lord of this same power so that multitudes in our day can be one unto the Lord. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. It appears that Many of us may feel that our time is gone tonight and that we probably shouldn't be going through another message. Or if we did at all, it should be such a very short message. I've been in places where they limit their preachers to preach 10 minutes message. And maybe there are places where, and there are times when short messages may be appropriate. But I think as ministers come together, and you have crossed oceans and seas, 
to gather here together, I think we need to get the best from the Lord. And sometimes we have a price to pay. And except we pay the price, go all the way, climb to the top of the mountain, or get into the depths of the sea. Sometimes what we're seeking, we don't easily get. But if we are willing to pay the price, I believe that the Lord is able to shower his abundant blessing upon us. And you should remember that in the days in which we live, Christianity is uh, changing fast. That many people do not look at the examples we have in the Bible. They rather look at the contemporary examples. And therefore they will preach by the minute or by the hour. And be looking at their wristwatch. I doubt very much if they use wristwatch for preaching in the New Testament. In fact, you may know the story. While Paul the Apostle was preaching, there was this young man that sat in the window. And um, he kept, Paul kept on preaching until a deep sleep caught him. And then, what happened to him? He fell down. Well, if you fall down here today, there wouldn't be anything to worry about because you are not too far from the ground. But he was so far away from the ground, when he fell down like that, they picked him up, he was dead. And Paul went there, apparently leaving his Bible an outline on the pulpit, and then ministered to him, he demonstrated what he was preaching. After that demonstration, he said, don't go home yet, don't let anybody worry, the man is all right now, now you sit down properly and listen. And then, I believe he sat down now, and then he went through the rest of the message. They went beyond midnight, and it isn't midnight yet. You get my point? You know where I'm going? It isn't midnight yet. You get it? Okay. I'm talking tonight on Christ's healing ministry today. And um, if I really wanted to take time, there is a lot we can talk about. And a message like this has many approaches. If I were to take a message like this on the crusade field, I will take a particular approach. Because all the people will be looking for is that they want ministration at the end of the message. But these being uh, ministers uh, gathering, a congress for people that are leading others to know the Lord. And I believe there are evangelists and developing evangelists here. Pastors and people that others are looking up to you and they are wondering if you can manifest the same power of Christ today. It's uh, with that approach I come to this message. Believing that you want to know how to get such power in your life. And if you are really willing to have all that God has for you, I believe that you can have the same power in your life in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Obviously, you see from this verse that the ministry of Jesus Christ went beyond three and a half years. In fact, all of the three and a half years, the apostle here puts into one word yesterday. He said, if you're looking at all that Jesus Christ did, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing goods and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, there is a way to compress all that into a moment of time in the past, yesterday. Then he said, if you are looking at all that Christ is still doing, through his messengers and his followers and his apostles, in today's world, that is at the time of the Acts of the Apostles, as we read on from Acts chapter 3, 
the miracle that took place. As you look at Acts chapter 5, the miracles that took place. As you look at Acts chapter 6 and chapter 7, the miracles that took place. You come on to Acts chapter 8, and you see how Philip went to Samaria, and the people were healed, and demons were cast out. You come to chapter 9, and the dead was raised. And you come to chapter 10, and you will see that there was this speaking in tongues that just came while Peter was still preaching. You come to chapter 14. And Paul was still preaching. He saw that that man had faith to be healed. He said, get up on your feet. You come to the end of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. He was in the island. And you will see that he healed that man. And then all the rest in the island, they brought all the sick to him. And they were healed. Now, the writer here compressed everything. Everything in the Acts of the Apostles. Everything in the Bible days in the New Testament. He compressed everything to today and then going beyond the apostles he now tells us it's not only for yesterday the time of jesus or for today the time of the apostles it's even forever because it says that these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they lay their hands on the sick and they recover they speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They will even cast out devils. And it says that will be to the end of the age. And so the past and the present for them and the future, which is for us, Christ Jesus is still the same. That means what he did before is still able to do today. In fact, his power does not change. Jesus is still continuing the work today through members of his body and it will continue till the very end of the age. You remember he said, all power, all authority is given unto me. Then he said, on the basis of that authority, on the basis of that power, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i command you i commanded you all things whatsoever and you remember one of the things he commanded his disciples he said go and preach the gospel of the kingdom and tell the people repent for the kingdom of god is satan he said in part of the commandments preach the gospel tell them to repent then he said heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. I listened to one of our preachers, Deep Alive, and he was uh, quoting that passage, and he cleverly omitted a part of that passage. He quoted it this way. He said, you know, the Lord is giving us a great challenge today. And the challenge is giving us, you'll find, he gave to his disciples. He said, go ye, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Then I said, this young man is clever. He omitted, raised the dead. I think the reason you omitted that is that he didn't want to face any embarrassment. So he read the part that he felt he could accommodate. So he said, the Lord is challenging us. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. And then he quickly opened another passage and kept on preaching. And uh, maybe I was the only one. That notice that you omitted something. Are we doing that? Because we're not willing to go all the length. And we're not willing to pay the price. And we're not accepting what Jesus said. He that believes in me. The works I did. That I've done to you. He will do. And greater works than this shall he do. Because I go to the Father. If you will develop your faith, the Lord is assuring us that you can do what Jesus did. 
In fact, we're told in the epistles, it says that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. And after he has said that in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, in verse 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I pray that that power will work in you tonight. And you will know the power is there. You'll know the ability, divine ability, enablement is there. So that you'll be able to reproduce the very ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're told concerning the Hebrews that when God brought them out of Egypt, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among them. I think our church members are looking up to us as preachers, pastors, leaders in the church. And they are expecting that we should know the Lord in all. So that there will be no one feeble among members of the church. And I believe it can happen. I want you a touch on three points. Number one, Christ's healing ministry in the scriptures. Number two, Christ's healing ministry through the early church. Number three, Christ's healing ministry through consecrated ministers today. Christ's healing ministry in the scriptures. We'll still take time to read some passages, even though I'm assuming that a lot of these passages you already know. Or maybe you are forgetting them. Or maybe you know them, you are reading them, but you pass over them without ever thinking of the power of Christ, the authority of Christ, the possibilities of the name of the Lord. In uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 37, And they were beyond measure astonished, surprised, and it says, they were saying, he has done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He has done all things well. As I read these comments on the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to understand that Jesus Christ himself said, the works I do, ye shall do. And therefore, the target, the goal, is that in your own ministry, the people should be able to testify, saying, according to the ministry of Christ, this evangelist, this pastor, or this teacher of the word, is following after the footsteps of the master. He has done all things well. He's also able to make both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. In Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. Please notice, Jesus never sent anyone away saying, that's incurable. That's uh, an epidemic. I can't deal with that. You take that to the doctor. That will need an operation. A fibroid cannot just get off like that. That will need those medical people. Jesus never said that. Every case that was brought to him, he dealt with it. And he dealt with it effectively. Don't limit Christ. And don't say because you have not reached that place, say that, well, although maybe he did it at that time, but I don't know whether I can do it today. Remember where we started. It's the same yesterday and today and forever. Healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. 
And he brought unto him all sick people that were taken with different kinds of diseases and torments, diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils. And Jesus didn't have to say, this one is hard. These demons have been there for years. And it had gone from ancestor to ancestor until it got to this man. And this is not something I want to play with or fool with. But Jesus dealt with every case. And those that were lunatic. And those that were at the palsy. And he healed them. If I give you some testimonies tonight, I do not want you to look on me as any great person, any different person. All that has happened um, when I pray can happen when you pray. Because uh, many of you, I can even see when we stand up to pray, many of you are taller than I am. And uh, many of you are bigger than I am too. And when we talk of intelligence, I think a lot of you might even be more intelligent. Except that I studied some things that people think that anybody that studied that has to be intelligent. Many of you are more intelligent. And it is the same word of God. And if you will take the same word of God, I believe the same thing will happen in your ministry in Jesus' name. And when I talk to people like you, to ministers, I bear my heart out because of one fact. I cannot reach the people that you are reaching. I may want to reach them. And the people may want me to come to them. But I cannot go to all the places. And there are villages who will reach. There are towns who will reach. There are campuses who will reach. There are nations who will reach. There are people you will touch. That even if I wanted to, I may never see them in life until we get to heaven. That is why I endeavor in a message like this to pour out everything I remember, everything I have, pour everything to you, believing that there is somebody there that will pick it up. And when you pick it up, you are going to use it, and it's going to happen in Jesus' name. You know, this year, the Lord has sent me to uh, 24 states in Nigeria here. And uh, we had retreats and crusades. Not only that, I've been to Sierra Leone and our brethren from Sierra Leone, they're here. And I've been to, I think, Ghana. And I've been to Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast will come later for their Congress. But I'm telling you that uh, some miracles happen more than uh, the things that even happen through me. Uh, we, we had a miracle in um, uh, those stage. Many, many things happened at the crusade. And then I told the people, I said, don't uh, look at me as if anything special is being done. I said, you will do the same thing. And then they said, amen. Just like you want to say amen to, if I gave you the chance. And uh, so I said, raise up your hand. I said, I'm going to pray for you. And they raised up their hands and I prayed for them. And the prayer was very simple. I just said, God, all that we have seen here and much more than we have seen here as they go back, do through them in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. I want you to say it now. Amen. You might be waking up an Elisha, you know. You might be waking up an Elijah that is sleeping, that God wants to put the mantle upon him and he's sleeping. And when I say something in Jesus' name, and then you, you shout, Amen, then the fellow wakes up, waking up, he gets the thing that he needs to get. And, um, you know, it's uh, so wonderful how God distributes all these wonderful things to us. And I believe he'll distribute to you tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you for waking them up. Uh, so in um, at those stage, uh, that night, I, you know, I prayed with them, and then they went back. Do you know, a person that got converted in that very crusade, he went back home. And uh, the people, the villagers, were crying. And he said, what happened? Then they said, uh, somebody died. Oh, he said, there's nothing to cry about. The pastor told us at the retreat crusade that uh, we can pray and something will happen. They said, get away. 
that you just uh, went to meeting, you think it is like that. You went to three days or four days meeting, he said no, that uh, there is more. And then while they were again, he got there, he pushed them all aside. And this man, you know, young converts uh, can easily get fanatical. And it is good nobody tells them it is fanaticism because it is being afraid of being fanatical that makes us to be powerless. And the man didn't have anybody to tell him, that's fanatical, that's fanatical, don't expect that. Only the Messiah can, that, that's what they tell you in the theological school. They say, Jesus did all those things because he was God. And being divine, being the Messiah, that's why he did it. Why are you attempting to be like a Messiah? And this young convert did not know all that confusing theology. And so he just got there. He said, tell me, villager, what's the name of, the, of this young man? And he told him the name. So he said, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I command just everything we said at the, at the crusade. He tried to recollect everything. You devil of this and you devil of that. You know, the man didn't know theology. He said, come out and I command you wake up and answer me now and then after that he said what did you call his name did he, then he called his name and the man said eh <laughs> and the fellow got up so you see, that's what I'm telling you. He wasn't a house leader. He wasn't a zonal leader. He wasn't a coordinator. He wasn't a pastor. He wasn't an overseer. Just a brand new convert. And if that happened to him, I believe that will happen to you. And so you see the ministry of Jesus Christ. We are told that this fellow was, the people that were possessed were devils. And those that were lunatic, lunatic, in a Uyo, our uh, pastor at Uyo is here in this congress. They brought this fellow with heavy chain in the legs and they padlock the chain because the man was completely a lunatic insane. And uh, that night, very simple prayer. And uh, after the prayer in the name of Jesus, the man got uh, healed completely and that man spoke wonderful fine English. And then we looked for the people that put the chain and the padlock and they removed everything. The man is free till today. And so Jesus Christ is still in the business of working miracles. And those that had the palsy and um, he, they, he healed them. In Sierra Leone, the mother of the president was uh, at a meeting in the crusade in the evening. And she told me herself the following day. And they said she never saw anything like this before. There was a paralyzed man who had been down there for about 22 years had been lame. And the mother of the president with all, the, all her bodyguard with arms and, you know, standing at attention around her. You know, they were looking at uh, that man there. And so I said, I'm going to pray now. And it's going to be a very simple prayer. The moment you hear the last amen, you know the thing has happened. If you are lame, if you are blind, just get up and walk up here. And then we just prayed the prayer. And we said in Jesus' name, the people said amen. I said now get up. And that man without any usher, without any counselor helping him, he got up like this and marched to the front. And the mother of the president phoned the son and said, My son, you need to meet this preacher that came from Nigeria. You see, the miracles that take place, the, the, the signs and the wonders that take place will make you touch the lives of many people. That is why it is a concern of my heart that it will not only be myself that will be able to go here and go there and get this done and get that done. You will do the same thing. Because that is the heritage of the children of God. As we look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, he went about and he did this. Do I need to read all the references of the Bible? You know it already. But let me give you seven points concerning the ministry of Christ. Number one, he healed every known sickness among the people. No exception. And that is your target. That is your goal. You are reaching for and reaching out to every known sickness among the people number two he healed every man that came to him the people that didn't come he couldn't be responsible for them but every man that came to him he healed and in fact some believed 
and he healed them. Some had doubts mixed with faith. He healed them all the same. Even those that had doubts mixed with faith. He asked that man, he told that man, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And a man cried out with tears running in the eyes and said, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And at that same time, the man was completely healed. Number three, the, the son of the man was healed. Number three, he had power over disease, death, and demons. He raised the dead. As easily as he healed the sick. Unless anybody will tell us that that is the credential of the Messiah. The credential of, uh, of Christ. Because of his divinity. We remind such theologians that Elijah raised the dead. Is that credential for divinity? Elijah raised the dead. Is that credential for divinity? And Peter also raised the dead. Is that credential for the Messiah? No. It's because of the power of God, the divine ability within him to lay an example for you and for me so that we'll be able to do what he do, what he did. Number four, the healings were visible and verifiable. The healings were not just things that people could not tell. They were things that were verifiable. Our brethren from Zambia are here. And uh, I remember the time I went to Zambia some, some years ago. There was this old man that had elephantiasis in the legs. The legs were so big like this, he couldn't wear ordinary pairs of crosses. And then he was blind at the same time. It was my first crusade in um, Zambia, I think, at that time. And so the journalists didn't believe that anything like that was going to take place. And so, that night, I gave the message on salvation, and then I began to pray for the people that had problems. And I said, if you have anything swollen, those big legs and everything, the journalists went to stand by that man. They wanted to prove uh, that uh, nothing like that is taking place today. And so, when I said, you just close your eyes, those people opened their eyes. They wanted to see whether it is true. I'm telling you, it is true. And so uh, I prayed. And after the prayer, I, immediately we just said, in Jesus' name, the, the, the legs went down like a balloon. Everything was all right. And then I said, don't go yet. It remains another miracle. If you are blind, it's your turn now. And, you know, God has a way of uh, convincing and confusing and confounding all these doubters. And so they were standing by, by that man, old man, I think about 80 years of age. And immediately prayer went forth like this. That man was the first to also receive the sight. The eyes opened. And those journalists got it to the president, Kaunda at that time. And Kaunda the following day called the whole of the team uh, that went with me from Nigeria. He called out to his, um, uh, to his uh, state house. And uh, we had a walking kind of lunch. He interviewed, we spoke for about two to three hours. Talking about Jesus, talking about miracle, talking about the new birth. You see, the miracles will open a way in the places where other doors had been closed. So I said, the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were visible and verifiable. Do you remember the man that was brought to him, being paralyzed, brought by four people? When he told him, arise, take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. The Bible says, immediately. He arose, he took up the bed, and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed and they glorified God, saying, we never saw each on this fashion. The miracles were visible and verifiable. Number five, whole communities became free from sickness. Whole communities. And of course, the disciples were kept healthy by his presence and power. I don't read in my Bible that there was any time Peter or John or James or Andrew or Matthew or Nathaniel or any of those people that they said they couldn't go on evangelism today because, you know, they were down. The very presence of Jesus Christ kept them sound, healthy, and well. 
And uh, when we say that, he made whole communities free from sickness. You will remember, maybe you open it in your Bible, in Mark chapter 6, from verse 54 to verse 56. And when they were come out of the sheep straightway, they knew him. And they ran through that whole region, round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, and where they heard he was. And whether, whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets, and he besought him that they might touch, if it were, by the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Whole cities, whole towns, whole villages and communities and regions. As they heard that he was around, he kept, he, he took sickness away from them completely. Number six, he healed, sometimes he healed the sick without speaking a word and without even praying. Can you imagine that? That there were times in the ministry of Jesus that without speaking a word, without praying, he healed the sick. The example of the woman with the issue of blood came to mind. He wasn't praying for her. He was just going about his normal ministry. And that woman had heard that Jesus was there. And of course, she had heard of the many miracles Jesus had been performing. And the Bible says she came in the crowd. And she said in her heart, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And when she had done that, she touched her, she touched him, and straightway, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. Number seven, his power healed even those that were far away without seeing or touching them. That's the ministry of Jesus. That there were times he didn't have to get to the place. You remember the centurion that uh, said, I'm not worthy you shall come to my house under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And we're told that Jesus said to that centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the Bible says, His servant was healed in the same self hour. Self same hour. The same thing with the Syrophoenician woman that came to him crying out, saying, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Although Jesus said, it's not good to give children's bread unto dogs. The woman replied, Trust Lord, yet the dogs were filled of the crumbs falling from the master's table. And then Jesus said, Great is thy faith. Remember, the daughter wasn't there. Remember that it wasn't the touch, it wasn't pushing, it wasn't falling down. But then Jesus simply said, Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And the Bible records her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Do you remember the nobleman that came to Jesus and said, Sir, this is urgent. Come down before my child dies. And Jesus said, Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way, and as he was going down to his house, his servants met him and told him, saying, Do you know thy son liveth? And then he inquired of them the hour, the time, the moment, when he began to amend. And he said, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him, and the father knew it was at that same hour, in the which Jesus had said, Thy son liveth. That brought him into the fold. He believed in his whole household. So you can see the ministry of Jesus Christ. And you can see how he healed. Now let's move on very quickly to the ministry of the disciples and the apostles in the early church. Christ's healing ministry through the early church. Now I want you to see that the early church, they expected Christ to heal through them. And um, they also prayed that the Lord will heal through them. In fact, it was a major prayer. A major prayer. Seminaries uh, will, uh, you know, teach quite a lot of things today about healing. And uh, they, they might say that, after all, healing, according to them, is not in the atonement. 
And then they, they interpret Isaiah chapter 53 in their own way. So that they take away your faith in the healing stripes of the Lord. And they decide it's not something we should pray for. They say if we ever pray for it, we should pray and qualify the prayer. And say if it be thy will. If you pray for salvation that way and say Lord I'm a sinner. I'm repenting of my sins. But I know you answer prayer in various ways. You can say no. You can say wait. Or you can say yes. Therefore, I come for salvation. If it is thy will, save me. You'll spend donkey years there. You'll never be saved. Whoever got sanctified by coming to the Lord and saying, Oh Lord, here I am. I lay everything upon the altar. Sanctify me. But I know you can answer prayers in, in any way. You can answer the prayer by saying no. You cannot be holy. Therefore, you cannot see God. Or you can answer the prayer by saying, Wait, not time yet. Or you can answer the prayer one in a thousand. You can say yes, then be sanctified. If, if you prayed for sanctification that way, how will you be sanctified? Or whatever other blessing you are looking for. And that is the way many evangelical churches have approached healing. They say God may say most of the time, no. Sometimes he may say, wait. Few cases he might answer. Let's see the attitude of the early church in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 from verse 29. And now Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to do what? To heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. They prayed for it. And uh, if you say, well, I'm not going to pray for it. You are not scriptural. You should pray for it. That signs and wonders will be done. Through the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that the Lord through you, when you pray, will stretch out his hand to heal. How did God answer that prayer? Turn to chapter 5. And see how he answered the prayer. We're told... In verse 12, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. That's exactly what they prayed for. In verse 15, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Can you think of that? Just the shadow of Peter coming upon them, able to heal them. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, it surprises you how we believers will be running away from uh, this problem is there, this problem is there, that problem is there. But thank God, there is no problem that the Lord will not remove. This year, God allowed me to go to Ivory Coast. And I didn't go there for crusade. I didn't go there for retreat or for any meeting at all. In fact, I'd been so busy in Nigeria here. I just went to plan for the uh, French uh, Francophone Congress. I brought uh, some leaders from French-speaking countries to Abidjan in Ivory Coast. And I said, we're going to plan together. Setting goals and looking at transportation and the various things we need to do for their Congress. And it happened that a Thursday was... Uh, one of the days of that planning. And so the pastor there said, um, the people know you are in town. Uh, will you be with us tonight? I said, please, I don't want to preach. I'm exhausted. That I'm so tired and worn out. I've been busy in Nigeria. Please excuse me this time. In his characteristic way, he smiled and said, uh, we don't, even if you just get up and greet the people just five minutes now they know that it's difficult for me to, you know, just stand up and greet people five minutes five minutes can become 50 minutes and uh, so he said we don't want, we don't want to overlabor you sir, we know how busy you are, we, we, we can see how tired you are and uh, we will be the last people to trouble you so just uh, get up and greet them and uh, then when I said, 
uh, well, that's all right. If it's just to greet them, then he said, uh, and if you will give a message, we wouldn't mind. <laughs> and uh, eventually, he talked me into giving the message, but in my mind, I determined that day that I wasn't going to minister this way, that way, because I didn't want to shout and lose all my strength and lose everything. And uh, so we started the meeting. It was a Thursday revival hour. But he had sent word across that I was around and the people came. And they were rejoicing. And there was this fellow that had uh, been immersed, immersed, embedded in occultism and evil power. And uh, he was going just on the street. And he saw that the people of God were worshipping there. He never stepped into any, any meeting like that before. Something pushed him and he stepped inside. And uh, he never closed his eyes in prayer. He never even knelt down or read the Bible or anything. He said that there was a tiger by his side all the time anywhere he went. If he wanted to do havoc with anybody, that was the tiger he sent to go and do the havoc. And so he was there. I finished the preaching. And then I said, heads bowed, eyes closed. For the first time in his life, he obeyed without question. He closed his eyes, he bowed his head. And then I said, if you are there, and I, and I know Ivory Coast because I've been there a lot of times. I said, any power, anything you have, and I broke all the power, destroyed everything. And I say, whatever you have, you are possessed with, you are empty now, that thing cannot be there again. He didn't understand what I was saying because he had never heard anything like that before. After I said, in Jesus, we prayed for other things and instantaneous miracles, telling the people come out to give testimonies immediately. Then he opened his eyes. He couldn't find the tiger. He ran out of the building, running after the tiger. And the ushers, the ushers didn't know what happened. They ran after him. And they grabbed him on the street. They said, what's the matter? What's the matter? He said, my tiger, my tiger. Ah. They said... Our pastor from the headquarters came. You came with tiger. You cannot find it again. And then that's how the man came back. And then he surrendered the other physical things in his finger and his hand. He said, take. I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. He's now a member of the church there. Tiger is gone. Evil power is gone. Possession with evil spirit is gone. You see, the Lord can do the same thing through you. That even just a shadow of Peter alone, healing the sick and delivering the oppressed. And um, the Lord, if the Lord has done something like this in the past, why do you think he cannot do it now? Why do you think it's so incredible that the Lord cannot through you heal the sick? Now, the time I was like you too, that if they were, pre if they were praying for the sick, I wouldn't go near them. If they were casting out devils, I wasn't afraid the devils would jump on me. I just felt that wasn't my area. I felt God has called me to the teaching ministry. And I knew that the teaching ministry was very, very important. And I came to that teaching ministry. But the Lord began to show me that there are needs in the body that needed to be dealt with. And then I started studying the word of God. And I started praying. And of course, fasted too. And eventually, the Lord began to do wonderful things, which, if it has not started in your life, it is going to start today. Yeah. And uh, so, in the early church, the, the Lord sent them to the elders of the church. He didn't say, well, uh, for the elders that have the gift of healing. He just, the Lord assumed that in every local church, there will be those elders there that had the power of God, the healing virtue of the Lord flowing through them in James chapter 5. Reading from verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call the elders of the church. You see, there is no opportunity or there is no uh, excuse for any elder of the church to say, that's not my field, that's not my area. That's not my calling. Let him call the elders of the church. And if you happen to be a pastor, the New Testament doesn't know of any pastor that cannot pray for the sea. If you happen to be an elder, if you happen to be a coordinator, if you happen to be a leader in the church, the New Testament does not know of any leader in the New Testament church that will say, well, just for me, that is not my calling. Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of 
doubt, the prayer of the prayer of uncertainty. Ah, we don't know whether this is one of the cases that the Lord wants to heal. We don't know whether this is one of the cases that the Lord just wants to let go like that. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, we have always counted Elijah as a special person. But you see, when the apostle here, James, when he wanted to encourage the elders, the leaders in the early church, of every local church, he didn't count Elijah as a, as a special, exalted man. He used his example for everyone. He said, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. That even the ministry of Elijah can be the ministry of the elders in every church. And then he said, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth a fruit. Let's go to point number three. Christ's healing ministry through consecrated ministers today. Here we are. It's now your turn. And you will do it. And you have to start somewhere. And uh, if, you, if you don't test it out, how would you know the power is there? You'll be thinking, maybe I cannot do it. Maybe I cannot do it. But maybe you can do it. Maybe you ought to try. Lay hands on the sick. Command the devils to come out. And take authority over those evil things. And you'll find that everything will be subject to you in the name of Jesus. Christ's healing ministry through consecrated ministers today in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. If I spoke to you tonight, and I pointed at you straight, and I say, you don't believe on the Lord. You'll be worried. You'll be unhappy. You'll say, why should I say that? Why did I single you out? Of this large crowd of ministers, leaders in the church, and say that you don't believe because you count yourself as a believer. You know you love the Lord. You know you want to serve the Lord. And you know you believe the word of God. If I pointed to you and I say, I know you don't believe the word of God. You'll say, why, how could you say that? I believe the word of God from cover to cover. Well, here is what Jesus said. Concerning everyone that believes in him, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. You have to do it. You have to try it. The first time I prayed for blind people, I didn't believe the blind eyes were going to open. That may shock you. I, we had that crusade. I've told the story here in Lagos. And we made publicity. Expecting, and you know, the people were saying, bring the blind and bring the deaf and bring everybody. And underneath my breast, I was afraid. I was saying, this deeper life people, they know how to do publicity. And they are not going to pray for these people. They are going to push me forward to pray for them. But I didn't want to discourage them because if I did, they will say, pastor does not believe. You know, you don't like to expose if you don't, if you don't believe. Do you like to expose it? I'm just like you. And so I kept quiet. And there we got to the national stadium. And while we were going to the national stadium, I saw some sick people, some lame people, blind people. I turned my eyes the other way. I didn't want them to spoil my message of salvation before I got there. So I, you know, gave them the word. I preached on salvation hard and, you know, right on the line. 
And I gave the altar call and spent a long time giving the altar call. So that after I spent such a long time, that the time that will remain, we can hurry over it and everybody will understand. And uh, so, uh, but I knew the people were waiting. They were expecting that today is today. And they were already encouraging the people, never mind, today your eyes are going to be open. Never mind, you lame people, you are going to rise up and walk. And, you know, we got the names of the people. I say, write those names, give the right address. We're going to follow up on you and all that. And now it came to the time of praying for the sick. So I said, oh God, help me. So a thought came to me how to come out of that uh, difficulty. So I said, I'm going to pray. And the way I'm going to pray, I'm going to say, oh God, we are here. I never used any personal pronoun. I never said I was there. I was going to pray. I said, we are here, oh God. And we as your church, we bring all these people before you. The reason I did that is that if nobody got anything, it's not my fault. It's everybody's fault. Uh, so the, you know, I prayed like that. And I said, as we pray with the faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we as a whole church were standing together. And I said, you blind eyes, because of the name of Jesus and the faith of all the people of God, be opened. And then while I was still praying, somebody shouted, his eyes had opened. I was surprised myself. And then the next prayer, I said, now, in the name of Jesus, I command you. That shows you then, you, you, might start, you might start in a humble way. You might start in a slow manner. You might start not very, very sure, trying to watch where you put your leg, what word you are speaking, but God will meet you in the middle of the road. Before you sink, the hand of the Lord will catch you, and a miracle will take place, and that will give you boldness, and you will run all the lengths in the name of the Lord praying for the seed. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, he shall do. That is what you will do. And then it says, Greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Not because you are strong, because I go to my Father. Not because you feel tall, you feel strong, you feel bold. Not your feeling, not your emotion. It is not because of who you are. It is because of what he is, who he is. It says, because I go unto my Father. And then it says, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do. Will he do it? That my Father may be glorified in the Son. By the grace of God, uh, nowadays, because God has now done this over and over, I become very, very bold now. In fact, there are times that uh, even if I didn't preach or if I didn't have to uh, do all the preambles of prayer and all that, there are times I can just go straight into the healing ministry and, you know, just get the thing done in the name of the Lord. It wasn't like that at the beginning. And when you are starting it, it may not be like that. You may feel a little bit timid, a little bit afraid, a little bit reserved. Go ahead all the same and do it. You will never be disappointed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how do you receive and manifest such power? Let me give these points to you. Number one, have such a burden and passion for the lost that you will be willing to spend and be spent to study, to consecrate, to pay whatever price may be necessary to seek to save the lost anywhere. Have such body and such passion for the lost that you will be willing to spend and be spent to study, to consecrate, and to pay whatever price may be necessary to seek to save the lost anywhere. If that is your burden, if that is a passion of your soul, the Lord knows how you feel. The Lord knows the kind of burden you have and it will make that burden eventually to be released so that people will be delivered in Jesus' name. Number two, get rid of any hidden sin. 
any hidden sin or any appearance of evil in your motive. And this is not to condemn you. You are searching. You are saying, oh Lord, I believe I'm a sincere believer. I'm serving you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. But your purer eyes are to behold iniquity. Even the stars are not clean in your sight. How much less the Son of Man. Therefore, Lord, is there anything hidden that I don't know about? Is there any appearance of evil in my motive, in my desires, in my ambition, in my life that I'm overlooking? Help me. Dig everything out. You see each vessel intending to transmit the anointing oil. And the overflowing power of God must be thoroughly cleansed within and without. Therefore, let the Spirit of God search you. Remember the word of God, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Ye, go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean ye that bear the vessels of the Lord. If a man therefore purge himself from these, anything that will defile, anything that will pollute or corrupt, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Number three, develop your faith. For the ministry God has called you to in his church. Develop your faith. Develop your faith. You know, I, sometimes I gave some messages myself. And uh, I'm sure this would have happened to you before too. There are many people that uh, they, don't, uh, they don't tell you all these kinds of things I'm telling you. Because they want to prove to you that they are very strong. They want to prove to you that uh, they, there was not a time in their lives when they were weak, when they were not certain, when they were doubtful. I don't want to do that. You see, there are times when I will preach a message. I preached a message uh, many, many years ago. God, what God has written concerning me. I, I preached that to the congregation. What to do when your face is weak. I preached it to the congregation. But I knew that there were some things that I preached in that case concerning faith, concerning power, concerning claiming the promises of God, that I knew that I myself, I needed those things. You see, I will take some cases and I will listen over and over and over and over and over again. There was a particular year I extracted from the Old Testament. All the passages concerning Elijah and Elisha. And extracted those passages into a single cassette. And I still have the cassette. And what I will do after doing all the things I wanted to do for the day, I'll put that cassette on. And uh, even though I, I wanted to sleep, I'll put it on. By the time I listen to it, I think I listened to it for almost one year continuously like that. Just about the power God manifested in Elijah, in Elisha, the double portion and everything. I would listen and listen and listen. Unconsciously, I found myself just acting that way. And these are some of the things that have helped in developing faith. And if you just read the promises of God, see how Moses did it. Moses was afraid. He didn't know he could do that. Even after God told him, throw that rod and became a serpent, put your hand in your bosom, and then he became leprous, and put it there again, became clean, he still wouldn't believe he could do it. And yet, a point came. If you study Exodus, that point came in Exodus chapter 6. All of a sudden, he had been complaining, he had been saying, I cannot do it, choose another person. All of a sudden, without his knowing, things just changed. His language change, his attitude change, his ministration change. That's what I found in my own life. That's what you will discover in your own life. If you will start from tonight and read words of faith, don't read books that will tell you, does God heal today? Uh, does God do this? Or does God do that today? Just do it. By the grace of God, it will, you will be surprised. Uh, you know, sometimes when I'm going to pray, there are things, I, I, you know, I teach myself, I talk to myself, and I try to preach to myself. And you'll be surprised some of the messages I preach to myself. For example, in all these, uh, all these uh, retreats, crusades have been going. I will go to this particular crusade, I'll see some marvelous things that God will do. Then I will get to a particular crusade, and then I'll be preaching to myself. I don't talk out loud. 
I just say these things to myself. I say, when are you going to grow? When are you going to pray for something you never prayed for before? What, which crusade are you going to step out more than you stepped out in the other crusade? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? What are you, how are you going to act in this particular crusade different from the others? Or are you going to continue the same way? And then uh, we, we got to Abuja and um, I've never directly, definitely prayed for hunchback before. You, you know, I will just um, turn that up my mind. I will, you know, touch on other things. Well, maybe others will not confess this to you, but here we are tonight. Aren't you happy to know the mistakes of the pastor? So, um, you know, at Abuja, here we are. And then I was talking to myself. When are you going to, you know, do what you've never done before? So I just said, here we are now. That whatever the problem is, something swollen there and whatever, I said it in some particular ways, of course. You must, uh, you know, I know myself and I know how God leads me. And I know how when I get to start, when I get started in something, I'll put it in a middle way. I won't uh, put it in a very hard way. I won't be too hard on my faith, on myself. I'll put it in a middle kind of a way to express it. I will understand what I'm saying. But if it doesn't happen exactly like that, the hearers will not understand. They won't know that I expected something greater. Well, if you understand, God bless you. If you don't, if you don't understand, that's all right. Uh, so, I, I put it a particular way. And we had one sister there, one of our workers. And she's still there now. She had hunch back. She had had that hunch back for 34 years. She's now 36 years of age. She wasn't born that way. It was at the age of two that that hunchback got on her. And I, as I prayed, like she wasn't even expecting to be healed of that. She had a little stoma problem. That was what she was expecting to be healed. But while I was praying, the power of God began to stretch her. By the time we said the last amen, she had become a little bit taller. The hunchback had gone away. Everything became totally all right. And I wouldn't, de I wouldn't uh, think of doing that before. But you see, by the grace of God, I tried to move a step further. Develop your faith. For the ministry God has called you to, you will start tonight. Yeah. Number four, know, receive, and use the authority given to all believers over disease and demons. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over some of the power of the enemy. I said some of the power of the enemy. All. Everybody say all. All, all the power of the enemy. And then it says, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Number five, pray fervently and fast scripturally. Pray fervently and fast scripturally. Thereafter, keeping yourself free from every form of self-indulgence and carnality. You know, the disciples came, they said, Oh Lord, why were we not able to do that? Oh, Jesus said unto them, because of your belief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. But Jesus didn't stop there. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by, by prayer and fasting. Number six, put on the whole armor of God. And for those of us who are pastors, raise up a team of well-trained, balanced, disciplined prayer warriors for the evangelization of your community and for the evangelization of the world. And pray without ceasing. Number seven, be filled with the Spirit. And pray for the gifts of the Spirit until... There is clear evidence of receiving the power gifts. In, in 1 Corinthians, <coughs> in 
1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 but covet earnestly the best gifts yet show I unto you a more excellent way and that way is the way of love make sure you're asking for the gift because you love souls not for pride not for sure but because you love souls here we find elisha following elijah and elijah said elisha stay over here for god had sent me to gilgal and he said as i so live it and as the lord live it i will not leave you and both of them went over when he got there, there were 50 sons of the prophets. They said, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from your head today? He said, it's not the time for discussion. I know it holds your peace. And so, they got to Bethel. The same thing happened. Jericho, the same thing happened. And now they passed over Jordan. While they were to pass over Jordan, Elijah took his mantle, he smote the river. And it parted into two, and they passed over. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask me, you must have something in mind. Following me thus far, staying while the other people, the sons of the prophets, have been waiting behind. There must be something in your mind. Ask me what I will do for you before I be taken away from you. And Elisha said, All I want. Not money, not gold, not silver, not property, not material things. Just a double portion of your power. And Elijah said, that's a hard thing. For a man to give double of what he has. Can a man give double of the knowledge he has? Double of the power he has? Can he give what he doesn't have? And yet... Even after he said it's a hard thing, he moved onto the side of faith. He said, if you see me while I'm taken away from you, it will be so. If not, it will not be so. So, it's now in your hand. It's not me that determines what you get and what you don't get. It depends on your vigilance. Depends on your expectation. Depends on your strong desire. Depends upon your faith. And then, all of a sudden, the chariots came to take the man home. And he saw him. And he said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel. While Elijah was going, he dropped his mantle. The mantle dropped down. The man knew, I have got it. How did he know he had got it? The very first day Elijah met Elisha, he was walking on the field. He threw the mantle on him. But he withdrew it. And then the man went to do, make all his consecrations and he came back and he had never given him the mantle since that time. When they were passing over Jordan, he used that mantle and he smote the water, smote the river. And Elisha knew that is a symbol. If I get that, I know that thing is on me. And while Elijah was taken away, the mantle fell. The man said, I know I got it. And he went back. And the very first thing that happened, how was he going to cross Jordan? He never thought it was impossible. After tonight, you never think anything is impossible. He took that mantle and he smote it. He said, where is the God of Elijah? The God of Elijah said, here I am. The river parted in two. And the sons of the prophets that were watching, they said, the power of Elijah is on Elisha. It's now your turn. Rise up and pray. Don't sleep, get something. Don't sleep, get the power of God. Don't worry about being afraid. Don't worry about human weakness. The power of the Lord is available for you.
The Lord says, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You can do it. Put your faith in Christ. You are a pastor, you are a preacher, you are a minister in the church. You can do it. He that believes in me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to the Father. Sister, the power is there. Brother, the power is there. If you don't do it, who else will do it? If signs and wonders do not take place through you, who else will do it? God has placed you where you are so that you will manifest His power. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Don't be afraid of the devil. The devil is under your feet. Don't be afraid of witches and wizards or herbalists or anyone. You should have gone beyond that point.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the concern of my heart is not just that we heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, just to do it. But it is because it opens up the heart of many people for the gospel. And I've seen that in many countries. I've seen that in many states in Nigeria here. And I do not believe for one moment that I should be the only one that will manifest, at least in our church here, the height and the extent, the scope of the miracle power we have seen. Please pay attention. I'm sure you have, you have seen something. If you have not seen it, I will show it to you. The Lord has helped me to be a teacher of the Word of God. But you will also notice something. As you listen to other preachers from this pulpit, you will say, thank God, you're as good as the pastor. They too have got that same teaching ministry so that now I can be happy that I am sure that the teaching ministry has been transferred to many people. Don't you believe that? Don't you see that? Don't you see people in our church here, they lay it line upon line, precept upon precept, they teach convincingly. And before they came to this church and, start, and before they started their involvement with this ministry, they were not like that. So we can rejoice that there is a transferable concept. And the teaching aspect of the ministry has been transferred to them. And this we see also in sisters. If you will, uh, you know, listen to some of our sisters, you'll be thanking God, glorifying the Lord, saying, it's not only with the men, it appears this teaching ministry is transferred to these sisters. Well, I thank God that is settling, I was still doing more of it on the teaching side. I think too that this aspect of healing, deliverance, miracle power should be transferable too. This is a new year. You will start. I want you to raise up your hand. Almighty God, we thank you for this hour and for this time. We bless your name because you have led us thus far. O oh Lord, I thank you because of the anointing I feel right now. O oh Lord, you bear witness with my heart. There may be other ministers that can say that. That can say they feel the anointing when actually they just say it. But Lord, you know me. And you know what, how you lead me. And you know how I feel that anointing in a very mighty, tangible way now. Lord, I thank you. I know you are beginning something with all these ministers of the Lord. And you are doing something that they never, never dreamt of will ever happen. And therefore, Lord, I bring all these brothers and sisters before you our national overseers, our state overseers, our region overseers, our location pastors, our coordinators, wherever they are, and all our women leaders, all the people that are here, the people that love souls, that have passion for the Lord, the people that want to make a mark in this generation, the people that want to bring many into the kingdom of God. I bring all these people before you. Oh Lord, I pray that the blood of Jesus will cleanse every one of them in Jesus' name. 
O Lord, shall there be any hidden thing in the motive, in the ambition, in the art, which will hinder the flow of the power of God in their lives? Remove it in Jesus' name. O Lord, I pray, it may be while they are sleeping, or it may be while they are conscious and awake, that you will take the surgical knife of heaven and whatever it is in their heart, whatever it is in their thoughts, whatever it is in their family, whatever it is in their disposition that will hinder the power, the anointing of God upon their lives. Remove it in Jesus' name. The hatred, the critical attitude, whatever it is, Lord, looking always at the dark side of things, talking too much, saying things they shouldn't be saying, or whatever weakness in them. Oh Lord, I pray, remove it from them in Jesus' name. Lord, the fears that are within them. Cautioning them, making them timid, making them feel that they cannot touch that area, they cannot go in that direction, they cannot look in that way, they cannot minister in that way. Oh Lord, that secret fear, or the fear of failure, or the fear of man, remove it from them in Jesus' name. Now, Lord. He told Moses that part of the spirit in him you are going to take and distribute to the 70. You did it. O Lord, Jesus Christ himself, as he healed the sick, cast out devils, then he called the 12. And he gave them power to heal the sick and to cast out devils. And they did it. He also called the 70, and he gave them that same power. Lord, Paul the Apostle said he was coming to those believers so that he will minister some spiritual gifts unto them too. So we know that this is your will, and this is your plan. Therefore, Lord, I pray, that a very definite anointing, a very definite power, the dynamite, the explosive power of God, will come upon each one in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, when the mantle fell, and Elisha picked it up, it didn't take another day. It didn't take another hour. Before the manifestation of the miracle came, he immediately went back to the river and he said, Where is the God of Elijah? O oh Lord, I pray, as this power comes upon these brothers, comes upon these sisters, I pray that in a very short time, the manifestation of that power, that healing power, that deliverance power, the power to do signs and wonders, will be manifested in their ministries in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, I pray that timidity and fear will get out of them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray in the night, appear to them. In the day, appear to them. Encircle each one here with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Build a hedge around everyone. That the enemy will not be able to come and touch in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I welcome the Holy Spirit here. And I pray, O oh Lord, that the mighty power of the Holy Ghost will come upon the brothers and the sisters now. And I pray, O oh Lord, that mighty power will be theirs in Jesus' name. And the various gifts of the Spirit, 
distribute to them. Let it come upon them. Let it show in their lives. Let it show in their ministries. That from now on, when they pray, there will be answers to their prayers in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, if there is anyone sick in yourself, sick in the challenge, anyone around here, I pray that that will be the practical side of our ministry. The brothers and sisters will simply go to them and in the name of Jesus command that infirmity to go and it will live in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone that may be sick here tonight. Your sickness, there is no place for you anymore here. Therefore, Lord, I pray that all those sicknesses will depart from them in Jesus' name. Anyone that has been under attack, under oppression, I command that the attack, the oppression, the affliction will depart from them in Jesus' name. I pray that from now on, you turn them to be another man. Another woman. That he'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Let that river of living waters within them gush out and flow out from them so that your power will be moving with them in every village.